Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. Recently, we put up a video that showed you how you could take any basic standard Android smartwatch phone thing like this, a uh, Cospet Prime, and turn it into an always on display. Well, that was great, except with the display on, which was meant for low power usage, it blocked receiving any notifications, including phone calls if you had a SIM card in it. So, got an alternative for you. There's those folks that use a smartwatch just as a smartwatch and don't care about phone calls or tethering to their... Um, their actual phone for notifications. If you're in that camp, the other video that we put up, which included a review of a couple of apps called Floating Toucher and Display Brightness, that one may be for you by way of a very quick review. How you can basically set that up for up to uh, 30 minutes worth of always on time and then the display would go off and you can simply renew it again you go into settings you come down to display you go into your sleep time which normally is set for 15 seconds and you set it for 30 minutes well you come out of that back to your watch face press and hold hit power save hit cancel and now you're into the quote always on display for a few seconds once you touch it a second time after it times out, it'll stay on for 30 minutes now. And in this mode, it is just a time display. Any notifications or phone calls won't come in. Well, that isn't acceptable for everybody. So we have a different solution that's going to make your watch look like this. This is the uh, Kronos Blade Genesis, and it's running a specialized app that is putting it into a very low power, relatively dim, always on display. And this one is truly always on, irregardless of having to set your timeout uh, function in settings. And it will allow interruption for incoming notifications or phone calls. Let me show you a quick example. Here we go. I brightened the screen up a little bit on uh, my house phone. I'm placing a call to the SIM that's in the watch. You notice it just jumped around. That's important on this one because it's going to help save the screen from burn-in. That's something the other uh, option that we use could present as a problem. So there you go. The call is busting through. I've got my incoming test call. Hello? Are you there? Hello? Hello? You hear it's loud and clear. Nice. I'm going to hang up. I'm going to exit this thing. It can either time out and go back into the long-term display, or I can press the power, and there you go. It's going to light it back up again, and we're back into um, this mode. You go to the Google Play Store, and you download this specialized app called Always On AMOLED. This is an AMOLED display. This one is not. This is a transflective screen that's viewable outdoors. But the app works on both of these kinds. So when you download it and um, re recommend that you put it on your phone first to try it out, it begins like this. All I've done is go into the Play Store and downloaded it and I'm ready to open it. First time that you open it, it says, welcome. You're going to have a bunch of things you have to allow. This will show up on the watch too. You need to mess around with this little thing here and change it back and forth between being a square or a circle in order to see all of this stuff on your uh, watch. Just uh, be aware of that. And the top one and the bottom one are kind of cut off, but you, you should be able to touch them. I know, it's flaky. These are not designed for watches. They're designed for phones. That's why it's good if you go through with me in the tutorial on your phone first. So you're going to allow whatever it wants here, which is drawing over other apps. Turn that on. You're going to allow whatever this is, which is writing system settings. You're going to check that one and then go back. On the watch, you just slide back instead of hitting that back button. The third thing you're allowing is to make and manage phone calls. Don't worry about it. That's so that the phone calls can bust through and you'll be able to see them if you have a SIM card installed. And finally, the last permission is in notifications and you have to turn that on 
and accept it in order for the app to receive notifications. It's those last two that are the magic that sets this app approach to always on time apart from the press the button type uh, screen that you got there. The fact that you can do phone calls and notifications. So we hit the right arrow and that takes us into crash reporting. You can allow them to get your basic information for crashes. Uh, I'm just going to deny that for here. It's already set and enabled. And at any time you want to check what it's going to look like within the settings, you just tap this button. And there it is. Whoa, it's really dim. You see it right there? It's on the screen, but it's really, really dim. Double tap takes me out of it. Now you go through here and you have all kinds of settings. Again, it's good to read them on your phone so you're familiar with them when you get to your watch because they're going to be really tiny. And like I say, you need to go back and forth between being a tiny square to read them and set them and being a full circle to see that button that you can test them to see what they look like on your screen. I have set mine up to have the date and you can put in a one line text thing and I've said Genesis on this one. You can have the time in any kind of font, different colors. You can put the power level on it. You can have a specialized button related to notifications. You can double tap to get out of it. And then when it times out on its own or you turn it off from the side, it will in just a few moments switch over and back to that always time display. Yep. You saw the slider go on there. It will work with display brightness, but it will not work with floating toucher. I don't have my floating toucher dot there. However, when I bail out of it, I do have it. So floating toucher doesn't work with this version, but you really don't need it per se because you have access to notifications and everything anyway. Once again, with this one, when I have it activated, come on, activate for me. I have to hit it just right. There we go. I can set up and hit the lock, and that will, without touching the side button, flip it back into that ambient display. So go through all the different settings. See what you can do. You've got um, all these different rules you can set up, time rules on whether it's going to be on or off at night, that kind of stuff. You've got, uh, oh, see, it says the app is very customizable. Well, you can change it at any time. And later it'll tell you, you can preview here. Appearance, overall brightness while it's off, it's set for 12. So if that was too dim, let's set it up here. Oh my goodness, on my phone, it's not even showing what these options are. I guess that would be the correct one. Okay, it looks like I did it. Now I display it, and now it's much brighter on the screen. And this is showing some uh, notifications right here. That same thing can be set up on your watch, so the notifications will appear. Either just icon or title, or I think even the whole thing. And you have all these other things that you can put on here too. So that's the quick and dirty of it. It's a simple app that you install. Here it is on the phone, I mean on the watch. Um, waiting for it to come back out of sleep mode. All right, I touch it again. Oh, that's right, I'm sorry, this one is in this sleep mode. There, I top, pop, pop that button and now it's returned it. This one you just simply double tap or tap the side and it takes you right back out again. I'm gonna press and hold, go into my recent tasks and get out of settings and watch and go into my Google uh, Play Store where I've downloaded it here and installed it. I say open and here it is and I go through. There you go. I got to do the allow, 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 allow. All right, we'll walk through them for you so you can actually see it. Allow all four of these things. Allow this and then the last one you can't see but you can touch it and I want to turn that on and allow it. Now, there's one critical thing, so watch it all the way to the end that you need to know about. That's all done. And we can go past here. Okay, there's that crash reporting. You can accept or deny. And now you're into the whole customization area. And if I simply hit that button, I get the 
display, it's really dim, of what it looks like as configured. Now, here's something you need to know. When you get out of here, double tap takes you out. We can come back to the screen. You want to come over to settings. We had to do this on the other uh, video for floating toucher and display brightness. You have to do it on this one too. Scroll down in settings to more. From more, go to background cleaner. Tap once on battery saver. Turn off the always on AMOLED. That prevents the watch from shutting it down when the screen goes off. If you don't do that, when you shut the screen off, it stays off because it quits the whole thing. But if you do it like I just did it, I wish it was brighter. You can see um, the display right there is now on. Double tap to get out of it or press the button. And that's an always on screen that's really going to always be on. Get in there and mess around with the configuration so that you can change it, brighten it, mess with the font, the color, the size, the look, the feel, the whole works. Really quick. Really easy, always on AMOLED, downloadable from the Google Play Store. Shout out to the couple of guys that have uh, referred me to that in the show notes of, uh, or in the comments of these videos. Uh, it really helps when you guys find something new and better. Please let me know. I just show what I know. And if you show me something new to know, I can help show the world. So we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. And we really do appreciate your subscriptions. You have no idea how much that helps. If you like seeing this kind of stuff and watch reviews, likes and subscription, really, that's the key. All right, we'll see you again soon. Oh, one more important thing. You notice how this just jumped around on the screen? A couple of guys have reported that when I'm in that uh, low power uh, saver mode, that the digital time is bright and in the center of the screen and doesn't move. That could be an issue for long-term burn-in of your screen. Um, there are different types of screens, and I have no experience or any information to tell you whether or not that could be a problem. But it's certainly something to consider because this particular implementation with the app, it bounces around. Even when it's big here, it moves a little bit around the screen. But of course, when it's small, uh, it'll bounce all over the place. Once again, if I press and hold, come into here and cancel out of that. Ah, they put that cancel button right at the same spot. There you go. That display, as bright and bold as it is, is going to stay there when it's on and you have it set. Oh, this is interesting. They're both working together now. Duh. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. You can have, well, best of both worlds. You could literally have a dim version of the face, which you can get into there. Um set up with the app for long-term use and when you get out of here and go into the other one, uh, you can have that one. So, hey, you got both if you want them. <laughs> okay.